Hey everyone, this is Shannon from Baker Creek and today Baker Creek is on an incredible adventure. We are here in the Nevada desert. We're traveling along the Old Spanish Trail and we are en route to visit a few farmers, uh, friends of ours, who are growing the incredible ancient handled watermelon. The seeds for this watermelon were found by Art Combe in a cave in Arizona and they've been grown out in this area for decades now. He found the seeds in 1928 and they've been a local staple for watermelon growers in the Nevada area for decades. So we're excited, we're headed out to Nevada. We're gonna travel through the desert to get there and nothing's gonna stop us. We're gonna visit farmers who have been growing it and we're gonna find so much more along the way. So we've stopped off, we're headed up to Salt Lake City, just outside of Salt Lake City to visit Art Combe's grandson who is still in possession of the vessel in which the seeds were found. And uh, we've just stopped off at an old west town in Nevada. We'll stop at nothing to follow the trail of the ancient watermelon, even if it means stepping onto a cactus in the desert. It's believed that this variety was bred by Native Americans with a handle shape so that it would be easier to travel with. Watermelons are an incredible source of hydration, especially in hot desert months. Right when the uh, watermelon is ready and ripe to pick is when humans need water the most and they need hydration. So it, it's a perfect traveling uh, handle and that is what is presumed to be the reason that the, the watermelons grow like this. especially so I could cut it open and save those beautiful seeds. Um, and it was uh, grown out so that it had the regular oblong uh, shapes that were more familiar to the public um, and sellable. Well, I started growing them and loved them because the flavor was so great, but after about two years of saving my own seed and planting them again, I noticed a few of them having this anomaly where some of them had this uh, a gourd shape or, or bottlenose uh, neck to it. And so I got really excited knowing that that's the way they were originally uh, grown out to be when, when they were first found. So I started saving and selecting the seeds from those uh, melons that started uh, displaying that characteristic. So that one of the things that really interests me is that here in the desert, I always wonder, you know, what was it that people ate back in the day? Whether it be the Indians or the pioneer, early pioneers or the early settlers that were here, and they didn't have, you know, the grocery store and supermarket to go to. So what did they eat? And I'm always looking for that. What are traditional foods for my valley? So when I saw this melon and that it was found somewhat nearby here and that the early farmers started growing us, really excited to continue that on here on our farm. I met Cliven and Carol Bundy at an extension meeting about how to be better farmers and he brought his melons and kind of uh, gave us a quick tutorial on how he grows the best melons ever, uh, dry farming here in the desert. 
And so we hit it off and uh, established a great friendship and he's been mentoring me ever since. So this is the shape that Art Combe selected to uh, grow them out so it was more familiar to the public. And there, it's, a, it's a nice large melon and, and really heavy and really dense. And the seeds are, are the same beautiful small red seeds. Uh, but um, originally they were very dark like this and uh, of course with the bottleneck. So, um, so we're really excited to see that uh, seeds have a memory for sure and that they, some of them are started going back to their original shape just the way they were found when Art found those beautiful seeds in the cave in 1920. And now they're back in the valley and I'm not the only one growing them now. Other people and other farmers are bringing them back so really excited about that. Uh, I am here with Kirk Comby, and Kirk, can you tell us a little bit about what we have here? Well, what we have here is the red watermelon seeds that my grandfather found in a cave in Arizona. He never told me how big the cave was or where it was at other than it was in the White Mountains. Uh, they were at the back of the cave on a natural shelf high up in the cave. He talked about there was about 200 seeds in the pot that he found. This little vessel right here holds 200 seeds. This plastic bag right there, if you can show them, Shannon. This is 200 seeds. That fit perfect in the pot. And he said there was a wooden cork that was recessed down inside the vessel that when he took the seeds out and planted them, he said he had about half a dozen plants germinate. And the, the pots, when you're looking at them, they've been lined inside and out with a pine pitch type resin. I didn't know about this melon myself growing up as a child till the 80s. And, and uh, when the article came out with these in the St. George magazine, and I asked my grandfather if I could have some seed, and he gave me seed, and I've been growing it since then. Uh, he talked about the melons originally were, when he first grew them, were only three to four pounds in size and had a crook neck. And these are, are more like a stem, or this is more the crook neck right here. And even to this day, even though I only select the very best melons that I repropagate, which this would be probably a little smaller than the average size that I raise, but they're, they're elongated like this, dark green on the outside like this, and a little thicker rind. And uh, the little crook necks like this, I always throw away. I never keep them. But I understand some people have started growing them back to the original style so that this is what the Native Americans had to deal with. My grandfather used to joke that the Indians preferred them crook neck because they were easier to carry. That's what he used to tell me. And I've had some that were really a, a, you, quite almost a full curve to where if you'd had a stick on your shoulders, you probably could have put several on both sides and carried them that way. Once he planted the melons from here and he was getting this here, he progressed from finding that, that first he experimented with the seeds. And he would find that the bigger the seed, the smaller the melon. And then he, uh, in looking at the seed, he started to pick out the very best seed, the, the darkest red, the nicest color. He'd plant those and started to get away from some of these to this type, more like this style here. And over the years, he just stuck with trying to grow this, this, this style, but no matter what we do, we keep getting throwbacks to this. He was more curious about the seeds kept the pot anyway, but his big thing in life was the seeds. And so I think somehow he was also maybe directed to find these seeds, find this pot, because I, in today's world, numerous people would have just thrown them away and stayed with the pot. But his was all about the seed. <laughs> 